Hi, this is Rochelle with Scrap Craftastic, and today I'm going to work on making my own planner date cover up stickers. I'm going to use a variety of tools, um, pens, highlighters, paint, so a little bit of everything. So let's just go ahead and get into it. This, I'm going to start out with some self adhesive paper. You can get this on Amazon. Um, Avery also has some. It's, Avery's is fairly expensive, <laughs> but it is excellent quality. Um, this particular paper I'm using is from a company called OnlineLabels.com. And I think this is more of a premium sticker paper. But what I'm going to do is I don't want to use just a whole sheet. So I'm going to cut these into quarters. I have two sheets, so I'm going to go ahead and cut them in half. Maybe I should do them one at a time so I don't make any unfortunate mistakes and mess up both sheets. Okay. So cut that in half, and then I'm going to cut it in half again. So, each sheet should give us four pieces. Okay, so we've trimmed these down. So we now have easy to manage sticker sheets. Let's zoom in a little bit. So, when you're making date cover-ups, date cover-ups are usually about one and a half inches wide and a half inch tall. What you could do is make yourself a template in that size and just trace it onto your paper, your sticker paper, or you could draw out the boxes on the paper. You could, a ton of different ways that you can do this. I think for this first one I'm going to draw it out and see how I like doing it that way. So I'm just finding the center and making sure that everything is lined up. And if you're not good with using a ruler this might be a difficult way to do this. I will be coming back in a future video showing how to use a ruler. So, if you're interested in that, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything, including the how to use a ruler video. So, I'm just going to draw a line down the center. That's the center of, I'm using a pencil by the way. I'm going to zoom out a little bit more. Okay. What I'm trying to do here is measure a half inch and then leave a space in between and then measure another half inch. That way, my date cover up stickers won't be jammed up next to each other and it'll give me some room for flaws when I'm cutting, things like that. Just a little breathing room. The reason that I really like this Tim Holtz ruler is because it is clear and because it has the vertical and horizontal lines, you can use it to square up the line that you are drawing. For example, so I have my tick mark here and here. So I'm going to match my ruler up with those two tick marks, but I can also look through the ruler to see if the edge of the paper is flush with one of the lines in the ruler that is going vertical. So for example, say if my tick marks were off. So I had a tick mark there and tick mark like slightly here. Well, let's do a little more exaggerated, like there. So if you look at what you measure, your tick marks would seem right. But then if you look at the line where 
it should be flush with the edge of the paper it's off a little bit so then you would know okay something's not right I need to straighten this up and make sure that that line is flush with the edge of the paper that helps me know that my ruler is in a squared position and that it is actually straight regardless of what I've uh, regardless of what I've marked on the paper because sometimes we're off a little bit with our measurements and our markings things happen but then it's also nice to have that little extra way to check behind yourself and make sure that things are straight so I'm using that as my starting point and another thing that I like about this ruler is that I can use the inside lines to measure what I want so this ruler is a one and a half inches wide so since our stickers um, are one and a half inches wide that's going to come in handy all I'm doing now is giving myself some margin space and then I'm going to use the width of my ruler to measure to measure the width of the stickers so I'm going to give myself a half an inch in the center as margin space and again I'm using my little tick marks where I measured but I'm also aligning the lines inside of the ruler with the edge of the paper just to make sure that I'm as straight as I can draw it straight just to make sure I'm as straight as possible and if you have drawing pencils you might want to use um, the lighter drawing pencils to do this I'm just using a regular mechanical pe pencil from the Target dollar spot uh, it's great for writing it's probably not the best to be using for this and I should probably be using my kneaded eraser let's see if I can find it okay so here are my drawing pencils and markers and whatnot which I probably should have been using so just lighten up some of these marks a little bit because we don't want them showing through okay okay I'm playing this by ear this is <laughs> not something that I've done before so we're figuring this out together okay so I'm gonna take my ruler and line it up here to get the width of my stickers together So that's my one and a half inches wide, and then this side. Okay. Now we need to measure up half inch increments, but we also need to leave space in between. So how am I going to do that? Maybe I should cut something a half inch. And use that or cut something. Let's do that. Let me get a piece of chipboard or old packaging. Let's see what I got. I got this piece of packaging from some mechanical pencils that I bought for the kids and they've used them all so let's get the old paper trimmer out and trim it up and use this as our template so that we don't have to keep playing with the ruler
Oops. So I'm thinking, okay, so we definitely need it to be one half inch wide, but then we're gonna give it a little extra space. Let's go with three quarters of an inch. And if this is something that you feel like you would be using all the time, I probably would do this with a piece of laminated cardstock instead of just a random piece of cardboard. Okay. So that's my three quarter inch one. Now let's, let's make one that's a half inch. So, I'm going to line this up. This is our half inch. Then we put our three quarter inch, that'll give us our gap. So, this is our gap line. So, this is half inch, this is the space in between. Then I can line this up again. That's our sticker. Line this up with the bottom of that. And that's our gap. I could probably make that piece a sticker too. Um, probably could have made this a little less gappy, but this is our first try, so we'll know better the next time. Make a smaller gap. But I want to give myself plenty of wiggle room just in case. Just in cases. Oh. I'm so off screen. It's hard to stay on screen. But let's do this. That might help. Sorry about that. That looks kind of crooked. You're probably going to need some type of metal ruler for some of this. Um, but I highly, highly, if you're going to be paper crafting, uh, making stuff for your planner, doing creative projects, I suggest this Tim Holtz ruler. I don't care for it that much when... Um, I need to use it for cutting, but for measuring, it works like a charm. I just don't like it because it has this slide thing, and to stop it from sliding, I could put a piece of masking tape on it, but then when I put the masking tape on, that kind of defeats the purpose of the clear ruler. And also, this rounded metal edge is not because it has like a metal rod in there. I don't like that for cutting against. I'm used to a straight hard edge like, ugh, like this metal ruler. If you're going to be cutting stuff, I recommend a metal ruler like this. Okay. Anyway. Let's put this up so I don't lose it. 
so this is what I have to start with for making my own stickers and I have my mouth liner highlighters I can do them with that I have this five dollar iridescent watercolor paint it's from Michaels you can work with that I have my Arteza uh, real brush pens we can use those I also have something that I haven't tried before at all I put these in a haul quite a while ago and just haven't had a chance to use them yet so I'm excited to try these and then I have a few other techniques just to show um, let's zoom out now that we've done all of that so let's get so we can get real crafty with these um, I guess the only thing I would say is remember that it's going in a planner so you don't want to put anything bulky on them like rhinestones or bling or anything like that but other than that paints and just experiment with it and have fun okay oh yeah and I also have my on the go watercolors so I have my Jane Davenport's which I probably won't use these for this but I got this out because my brush pens are in here so let's see which one do I want to use I guess it really I'll use the Prima one oh and these are all also Arteza water brushes but I'm going to use the Prima one for now so for this first sheet, since we went ahead and drew out the lines, I think I'm going to do the highlighters. I'm not a fan of how highlighters look. I think I like the mild liners best, but I'm not into the fluorescent color of highlighters. So um, let's try this. where they actually colored a swatch in the background like that I don't know let's try another color I like the gray Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday Sunday so I actually could get a whole week out of this hmm let's try I don't really know what I want to do um, let's try this Look. Let's do the same on the other side. Okay. So I'm just going to start out with these three. I have a good variety of day of the week stamps, but I'm going to try the newest ones in my collection. These are from Goldmine and Coco, and I guess she did a collab with C. Amy Draw, and came up with these day of the week with a few other words and phrases, um, clear stamps. So I just received these recently, and I'm going to go ahead and break them in and try them out for the first time so we're gonna start 
with Wednesday since Wednesday is the longest word in the day of the week and if you let me get this put this behind here so whenever you're trying to make sure that something will fit within your day of the week space it's always a good idea to start with Wednesday even when I'm making inserts Wednesday is the day of the week word that I work with first because if Wednesday will fit then everything else will fit Wednesday is the longest um, word so as you if you notice here even here Wednesday is slightly smaller than the other days of the week the 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 actual letters are slightly smaller so look at the E here and look at the E in Tuesday so Wednesday was made just a little bit smaller because it was probably entirely too big to fit the space so we're going to start with Wednesday anyway when these are nice and tacky it's not falling off my finger um, I'm going to use a small block I'm not sure if these blocks are available on Amazon if they are I will link to them in my shop I'll also have links to the Arteza supplies the mild liners all that so let's see I probably should use a more permanent ink, but we're going to start with this uh, dye ink by Ranger. I haven't stamped in a long time. It's been a while. Let's get a scrap piece of paper just to see how this goes. Okay. Yeah. I don't think this ink pad, I guess it might help if I wasn't using it on top of the watercolors. Okay, so we got a pretty decent impression. I'm going to, sorry to keep zooming in and out, but I want you to be able to see as much as possible what I'm doing. So, I don't know why I have to do everything upside down within my pencil marks as best as I can and stamp so yeah it looks like these are a little bit bigger than a half inch tall so it's a good thing I just penciled those lines in and didn't commit to them completely So let's take that one off. Wow, these are good stamps. Let's try Tuesday. They're real sticky, icky, icky. I don't know if that's a good feature or not. I'm not like a stamp stamping expert, but I like it because that means it's not just going to be falling off of my block in the middle of stamping. Oh yeah, I definitely need more space than a half an inch tall for these babies. Ooh, I love them. Love them so much. Can't wait to use them on something else. Okay, so let's go back to Monday. Wow. These are super nice. I'm using this um, to 
kind of warm the stamp up I guess you'd say using it for the first time just to make sure that it's stamping as best as it can And then that's just a way that you could make your own <laughs> uh, day of the week stickers. Now, the problem, again, these are a little larger than I expected as far as stamping. I love the size of them. They're just not going to fit in the box that I designed for it. Um, but... That's just something that I'll have to get over. So now I'm going to let's go ahead and erase some of those pencil marks first. Because the Monday and Tuesday are outside of their box. Those are going to be a little tricky. But should be able to work around that. Don't erase completely because you need some kind of guide, but you just don't want it glaring out once you've um, cut it. But you should still be able to see a little hint of your lines. So on this one, I'm going to line it up for Wednesday. And I'm going to lightly not try to cut all the way through the sticker paper I'm just trying to cut like that first layer you should be able to feel it I think I feel it <laughs> yeah okay so then I'm gonna do the other side and so it's not too this isn't the best blade either. I haven't changed this blade in forever. I'm just going to go ahead and cut all the way down. Okay. So now I should be just able to peel this off and use it as a sticker. Now, since I had to actually cut outside of my actual box because of the size of the stickers, I'm just gonna go in and touch up the edge a little bit on this particular one. But that is a sticker that, let's see how this is showing up it's ready to go in a planner. I just don't have one to show you. <laughs> okay. Let's put it back. And let's see how the gray one comes out. Perfect. Okay. So that's one idea how to do it. Um, the measurements can be complicated. You can skip that part altogether, especially if it's something that's not going to fit in a box like that. Another way to do it is, let's do some more with the highlighters. Since we got... Um, actually blue
Okay. Then we can take a micro pen, a micron. This point one. It's a little small. Let's try point three. Okay, so I'm out of practice with my handwriting. <laughs> it should be pretty evident by how sloppy this is. Um, but I'm going to go back in and clean it up as best as I can with the down strokes. Um, I probably should have used a lighter highlighter color. But this is just, you know, a demo playing around figuring out what's the best way to do it. Because that looks, to me, that's difficult to read. It looks too dark. I don't know. It may come across better on camera. And I may get used to it later, but... And you won't have to freehand this um, like I just did it. I mean, I just went for it. You could actually sketch this out with a pencil and go over it first. I tend to do that sometimes, but I just thought that, I don't know. I'll just go ahead and freehand it and get it done. It's not so bad. If you like this style of um, date covers, there is a freebie on my website at Scrap Craftastic that has a similar look and you can actually download and cut those out for free really muddy But anyway, that's just an example <laughs> to show you that you can do it that way. You could even just write out your day of the week and do it that way. You can make a whole bunch of other type of stickers doing this. You don't have to do uh, the weekday covers. I just thought that they would be the most useful and I've been thinking of ways to uh, use my Dollar Tree planner and date cover ups was something that or day cover ups was something that I thought was an interesting option and that it could possibly be useful but I didn't really just want to go order stickers and sometimes even though I have the equipment to make the stickers I wanted to do something and show a way to do it that you know even if you don't have those things you could make some with basic arts and craft supplies that you probably already have on hand or that are inexpensive 
So let's see, which one do I think looks the best? Probably the first one. Did I cut that part? Yes. Okay, there we go. So that's the Thursday. That's how it came out. I prefer the stamps, but you can do it a whole bunch of different ways. Let's try the brush pens next. I need to find another way to store these because I'm really not liking this plastic container anymore. But we have the 4th of July coming up so I kind of want to do something blue and red maybe I'm not sure if the right color blue oh yeah that's a good one so we're going to use this one let's find some red uh-huh okay so these are the two we want to use now how do we want to use them so I'm just going to put this piece of paper under here just in case um let's just I don't know what to do Okay, so there's our pattern. Simple, basic. This time I'm not going to do all the measuring. Let's just stamp our days of the week and give ourselves room. Oops. So that's probably a little dark. Let's try one more time. That's better. So then you could either use the same method with the X-Acto knife or you could just cut them out, peel them off and put them in your planner. could just cut all of these out and use them on my spread and then I'm just gonna let's just cut a couple of them out and really you could just stamp a whole bunch of these like I did here stamp a whole bunch on just a regular piece of sticker paper and go in depending on what kind of ink you use and color what you need to color paint over what you need to paint over and go from there. I need to clean the glue off of these scissors. So I don't know if that's perfectly straight or not. But well. So you can make them like sticker flakes and have them ready to go. So just an idea. Let's do something with just regular watercolor or with the, I'm now wishing I hadn't stuck those on there. <laughs> um, 
these are like iridescent. They have a pearly look to them, a shimmery look once they're dry. Ugh. Okay, so let me get my brush pen. Let's do a rainbowish thing. Well, that's not the color I thought. Um, uh, well, that one fell off. I'm just going to wing it. I don't know how much um, water this paper can tolerate, so. So, okay, I'm going to let this dry. I'm not going to put a heat gun on it because it is adhesive. But, as you can see, it's still wet. But I think you can see the um, shimmer in the paint. So, it's going to be really pretty. Okay, so I let this dry and the paper rolled up on me. I tried to hit it with the heat gun before I came on. Just a little bit to unroll it. But it did not work. So... Um, depending on what kind of sticker paper you're using, you may get some curling <laughs> like I've gotten here. To alleviate that problem, I'm going to use some washi tape that I don't use often to tape down my paper, my sticker paper, so that I can stamp on it. Now, first I need to decide, do I want to stamp this way or this way? I think I want to stamp this way. I think it was a little bit of a mistake to do my rainbow this way. Probably should have did it at an angle. I don't know. Oh, now it's just going to pull up the whole piece of paper. Okay. So let's go ahead and stamp some days of the week and you could use this for other stuff too by the way so you could stamp other things on it and make other types of stickers pretty uh, I'm just gonna stamp randomly just making sure that I leave enough space in between to be able to cut them out mm, that one didn't stamp good but and I could also be using my stamp platforms with this I didn't think of that because I could actually stamp all of this in one in one stamp we may try that on the next design So I think these came out really pretty. Um, I wish I had a one and a half by half inch punch or something like that. A nice rectangular punch. But those are really pretty. You can see the shimmer. You just need to cut them out. And actually you could use a paper trimmer to cut these too. Just have to be careful. Okay, so let's see what these look like.
cut out Okay, so this is what they look like up close. I could probably do a better job of cutting them out. Got two Saturdays because this one didn't stamp well. There's Thursday again. A little bit crooked, but... <laughs> so I can finish those up. And I think this would make a great base for a whole lot of different uses. Maybe doing your numbers could work for several things okay so the next one so that's watercolor we've done the real brush pens we've done the highlighters so let's try it with the Arteza gouache colors so I'll link in the eye above and down in the description box below the Wednesday's haul where I share these so I'm just gonna figure out what color I want to use we've already went with the 4th of July theme we have did a rainbowish theme so I think I want to do something just that's just pink maybe I don't know Let's see what comes to mind. I thought I put all the colors that I probably wouldn't want to use that much towards the bottom. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to get out the pink and the purples. Maybe this one. And that's it for now. We'll work with these two trays. So I just want to look at some of this, the colors while I'm thinking about what kind of design I want to do on this next sheet. Ooh, that's pretty. This, I'm going to put them on, up on the top. Ooh, that's pretty. I think I was just going to do three colors. And gouache, from what I understand, you can do it translucent, kind of like watercolor, or opaque, like um, um, what do you call that? <laughs> Acrylic paint. I think it's supposed to be kind of like a cross between the two. Ooh. So, I'm not really feeling that color too much. Let's try this purple. Or lilac. And then, you know what? I should have got a teal color. So that I could do the pink, the purple, and the teal. I doubt I'll use that one. Um, it's a little too fluorescent for the look I want to do. But I kind of like something like that. I think would be nice so let's see if I can find one that's that color ooh that's surprising I don't see I guess I could have just looked at the color key on the box I don't see anything that's that color hmm okay well I guess we won't be doing that color. Maybe I'll have to go with the fluorescent pink instead. Let's see what this looks like. Let's just get a little dab of that. see this one got lots of pinks and purples that's a better pink okay I think we got enough to work with to move these over let's get our brush
I'm going to do it more opaque, less water, more opaque, and see how it comes out. Probably need a bigger brush. So this is my first time ever using the gouache and it's, it is kind of like a cross between watercolor and acrylic. So I'm going to go over this with some white splashes just to brighten it up a little bit. I got to find the, the right tray for that. And I think this is it. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to put a little bit of this white on the tray. I hope this works without splashing water all over my desk. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and put it in this little area here where I was using white acrylic paint. And then got plenty of water in my. I'm going to get some out and make it kind of watery. Water it down. That might be too much water. And then just splatter it on the paper. Okay. I think that's enough. Now this time, instead of using the individual stamps, I'm going to put them on a stamp press platform and do them all at one time. So this one I haven't used as much. This is the Stamp Perfect Stamp Positioning Tool. <laughs> This is, it looks really heavy duty, but it's not. It's pretty lightweight, kind of flimsy. Um, but we're going to try it for this. Okay, still not dry. So I'm going to try and hit it with the heat tool. Hopefully that won't, won't cause a problem. We'll find out. See it's curling. Turn on the other side and hopefully that'll help with the curling. I don't want to get too close because you don't want to melt the adhesive. So let's put it on here. Like that, that foam moves. I'm going to put it in the corner. I am going to put a little tape on that. hold it down Okay. Now here we go. Now this is probably not the best way to do this since I haven't cleaned these stamps. 
but in the interest of time I'm going to do it this way So with these platforms, you put your paper down, you put your magnets or however it's your paper is secured to the platform or to the base. And then you place your stamps in position and then you close the lid and they will stick to the lid like so. Now. Everything's on there. You take your stamp pad and put your ink on your stamps. Yeah, this is really, really flimsy. Not that great of quality. I think the Tim Holtz one is really nice. I used to use that one in my From Scratch spreads. Stamp neatly and then close your lid and apply pressure. I got little pieces of trimmed paper all over the place. And then lift it up. See, so you can see where it didn't stamp quite right that's the thing of this is that everything is in the same position so you should be able to go back and add, add more ink so that you can restamp it Let's see I could probably go one more time but I'm not going to risk it and I'm going to leave those on there for now because it'll make it easier for me to clean the stamps so and then I can clean around as well so I'll take the washi tape off and now we could cut these out so since I'm not that great with cutting them out by hand <laughs> let's try it with the paper trimmer this time and that's another good reason to line them up neatly makes it easier to cut with the paper trimmer so Here's another partial set. I didn't cut them all out, but these are the gouache paint. This is the metallic watercolor paint. And I only cut out one of these. Let me cut out a couple more. Okay, so there's Tuesday. And then we have these. So these are the date covers we made just using stamps, paints, highlighters, just a variety of different mediums and designs. I think they turned out really nice. In future spreads, you will see me using some of these um, in the Dollar Tree planner, and I may even use some in some of my other planners. Um, there's tons of different ways you could do this and add to this and use different stamps, initials for the days of the week, lots of different things you can do. Um, I'll probably come back and do another part to this showing some of those but this is it this is what I've come up with for this particular video let me know in the comments below what you think of these DIY stickers or date covers 
If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.